نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركهم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Our praise is due to Allah We seek His guidance and His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the whispering of our desires Whom Allah guides no one can misguide and whom He allows to be misled no one can guide and I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone having no partners and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger and his perfect worshipper. As to proceed, in the 20 seconds that I started this khutbah, I saw four people checking their phones and talking to each other. And I just want to remind you all that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made of the etiquettes of Jum'ah that we don't touch anything and we don't do anything other than listen to the khutbah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man lamas al-hasa faqad lagha wa man lagha fala jum'ata lah that whoever touches a pebble they have committed laghu vain speech and whoever commits vain speech in Jum'ah then they have no reward for Jum'ah so a person came and they drove all the way over here and they sat they left work but they also need to refrain for these 20 minutes and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam back to the topic of my khutbah but inshallah ta'ala I do believe that we need to spend more time reviewing even the fiqh of Jum'ah because we turn to forget and I don't want anyone to think that I'm talking to young people because the elderly are just as attached to their phones as the young even when I'm a, a khatib not, when I'm not a khatib I was recently sitting at, attending a Jum'ah khutbah and the man next to me was buying stocks during the khutbah. And that's a combination of not only false speech but false actions. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that whoever buys or sells in the masjid, then the sunnah is to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not bless your transaction. May Allah, may Allah not bless your transaction. Because the, the masjid is not for that. The masjid is not for the dunya. It is for the seeking of the reward of the hereafter. In any case, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik reported by Tirmidhi he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Abdi innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la ubali O my servant as long as you call upon me and have hope in me I will forgive you no matter what you have done and I will not mind. We are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no matter what sin a person has created, no matter what they've done, that if they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have hope in Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. And He will not mind. I want to talk briefly about this concept of istighfar, seeking forgiveness. Qatada says, "Inna hadha al-Qur'an yadullukum ala da'ikum wa dawa'ikum." He says, "This Quran guides you, directs you, instructs you to your disease and to your cure." He says, "Amma da'ukum fadhrub." As for your disease, it is your sins. 
And as for your cure, it is to seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كذبت أيدي الناس. Allah says, corruption has appeared in the land and the sea due to what people's hands have earned. All over the world, you look and you see civil war and you see strife and you see calamity and you see disease and you see poverty and you see drought. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, corruption has appeared in the land and the sea due to what people's hands have earned. That he may give them a taste of what they have done. Perhaps they may come back. And so this corruption that we see in the land is a result of what our hands have earned and it is just a bit of the return on the investment of our sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to us perhaps by seeing the effects of our sins will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And so by seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I don't want you to think that it is simply a cure for our sins on the day of judgment. Qatada says it directs you to your da, your ailment, and it directs you to your cure. Your da, your ailment is your sins, and your cure is seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness does not change just the trajectory of your hereafter, but it changes the trajectory of your life. It changes your life today. There was a brother. <clears throat> who was one of the, the first of my group to get married The first of my friends He was the first one After college Out of everybody He was the first one to get married And I remember we all When we went to his, his, his wedding <clears throat> People at the wedding were asking him They said how did you get married Like how did this happen We didn't think it would be you And so he said You guys want to know the answer I said yes He said it's istighfar I made a lot of istighfar. And that's in the book of Allah. Nuh alayhi salam he says, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh alayhi salam he said, make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord is oft forgiving. So not only is your Lord oft forgiving, meaning that He will forgive you, but look at everything that will happen as a result of your seeking forgiveness. He will send the rain down upon you and he will grant you children and he will grant you wealth and he will make for you rivers. All of that will happen as a result of your istighfar. And for you to have children, you have to have a spouse first. And so Al-Hasan Al-Basri, when a man came to him and he complained of drought, Al-Hasan told him, he said, go and make istighfar. And another man came and he complained of poverty and Hassan told him, go and make istighfar. And another man came to him and complained of his inability to have children. And then Hassan told him, go and make istighfar. And when people came to him after or his students had witnessed all three discussions, they said three people came with three different symptoms and you gave them all the same prescription. He said, did you not hear what Nuh alayhi salam said? Nuh said, Seek forgiveness from your Lord. Your Lord is off forgiving. He will make the sky cascade rain down upon you. So that farmer who's complaining of drought, make istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the rain to come. That father who's complaining of lack of children, or that husband who's complaining that he's not a father yet, يمددكم بأموال وبنين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you make istighfar, he will extend for you wealth and he will extend for you children. ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا, he says. Nuh alayhi salam, he says, why is it that you don't give Allah his due amount? Why is it that when it comes to the equation of success in your life, you remove Allah from the equation? And so you think of studying, and you think of getting good grades, and you think of networking, and you think of knocking on this person's door, and, 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 and meeting this person, and asking this person. But you don't think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yes, it doesn't matter who says no. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no, it doesn't matter who says yes. And so seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't just seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for our sins. But it is beautiful that in Islam, we know and we believe that there is no sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive. Or cannot forgive. If a person simply turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks forgiveness. As long as you turn to Allah, our relationship, our servitude is a Lord or is to a Lord who is so perfect in his ability to forgive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 
He says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ That is Surat Al-Buruj. It is a beautiful, beautiful pairing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ You know Surat Al-Buruj is the only surah in Juz Amma where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two of his names together. وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ and he mentions, وَمَا نَقَمُ مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ I don't have time for this verse right now. But وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself the forgiving and the loving. His loving is, and his forgiveness is so perfect. Some of us, if we are injured by somebody who's very close to us, we might get to the point over time where we're able to forgive them. I want you to imagine the most severe betrayal. And if that person comes and asks for forgiveness and tries and shows changed behavior, then I might get to the point where I forgive them. But am I ever going to love them perfectly again? It's very hard. It's very hard for the love and that closeness to come back. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was standing in front of the man who killed his brother Zayd. Umar is the Khalifa. And he says to the man, I ask you by Allah, did you kill my brother Zayd? Because Zayd was martyred in the battles of Ridda. And those people who had apostated accepted Islam again after they lost, those who survived, they accepted Islam and they became absorbed into the Muslim community again. And so now Umar is standing in front of one of those people and he said, did you kill my brother Zayd? And the man said, yes, I did. So now everything we know about the rage and the power and the justice of Umar ibn Khattab, his older brother Zayd that he loved so much, he is now standing in front of his killer. And Umar ibn Khattab simply says to him, then stay away from me. Because I am never going to love you just like the, 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 the earth never likes Blood, we don't, we're never gonna mix. And then he says, "Amirul Mu'minin, is your lack of love for me going to cause me to lose out on any of my rights?" And he says, "No. Your rights as a Muslim is one thing, and my love is another thing." But Umar radiallahu anhu is saying that I, even if you are forgiven because you've accepted Islam again, there will never be a scenario where I can love you because you killed my brother. And even someone who had a greater capacity of love. And forgiveness than Umar is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is amazing how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was able to absorb all of these people one after the other of people who fought against him, <coughs> people who insulted him, people who mocked him, people who hurt him, people who ridiculed him, people who fought against him, all of these people who became Sahaba. He absorbed them all and he loved them all. But there was one man who injured the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam forgave him and accepted his Islam, but he simply told him and he said, Can you please stay away from me? And that was Wahshi, the killer of his uncle Hamza. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it was such a painful image for him, the mutilation of his uncle on the battlefield of Uhud. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam simply told Wahshi, he said, I don't want to see you around. If that's okay, just stay away from me. You're a companion, your Islam is accepted, your sins are forgiven, all of that. Even the Prophet Sallallahu had limits when it came to his love. And yet, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ It shows us that there's no one who is alive, who is not only beyond being forgiven by Allah, Al-Ghafoor, but being loved by Allah, Al-Wadud. And this surah comes in the sequence of a people who had committed genocide. Qutila ashabul uqdud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, cursed are the killers or the people who caused the genocide in the trench. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still says, wa huwa al wadud. Allah is the forgiving and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the loving. And so we are fortunate that we worship a God who never disqualifies us from his mercy, from his forgiveness and from his love the minute that we turn back to him. أقول ما سمعتم استغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith of Anas, and I want to conclude with this, I want to, I want to read the whole hadith. He says, Abdi, innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la O my Lord, O my servant, as long as you seek forgiveness from me and have hope in me, I will forgive you no matter what you have done and I will not mind. Oh my servant, if your sins were to reach the sky and then you saw forgiveness from me, I would forgive you. If you were to meet me with the earth's weight in sin, imagine somebody comes with, with whatever the weight of the earth is and you came to that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sin laqaytani, and then you met me not committing shirk with me as long as you do not commit shirk I would meet you with what is equal to it of forgiveness and so we offer what we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we stumble along the way but we have to make sure that we continue to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness make istighfar your constant companion Make istighfar that which you use to illuminate your heart. Make istighfar that which you end your day with. Make istighfar that which you do after your obligations. And after our salah, we are taught to say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. We seek Allah's forgiveness even after our good deeds, much less our sins. Because even these good deeds that we offer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not offering Him what He deserves. We're not offering Him what He deserves. So we offer what we offer. And we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for our shortcomings and our human deficiencies. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to hear the speech and follow the best of it. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al jannah wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta waliuha wa mawlaha. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika. Ma tuhulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik. Wa min ta'atika ma tuballughuna bihi jannatak. ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل فأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحمك بأهلنا المستضعفين المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم ارحمك بأهلنا في الصين وفي فلسطين والسودان وكشمير وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم كلهم معينا يوم قل المعين كلهم ناصرين يوم قلنا الناصر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وقوموا إلى صلاتكم الحمد لله